We're just beginning, or about to begin Lent, and uh, this Sunday is Transfiguration Sunday. So I'm going to begin with uh, just part of that reading from Mark chapter 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. Then going to verse 7. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Here in the reading. The, these e extraordinary kind of, um, what's, the, what's the word? Certainly not miraculous, but uh, places where God clearly breaks through from the, almost always from above, from the heavens down to earth. Happened about three times in the gospel, uh, gospel of Mark. The first is during uh, Jesus' baptism when the heavens are torn apart and the spirit descends like a dove and God says, this is my son, the beloved. Um, and then of course, then the transfiguration. And then also when Jesus is um, crucified on Golgotha, the sky is dark and, 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 and there's trembling um, and those things like that. Um, and so the, I think one way to talk about these are like they're thin places, very, very thin places where so clearly heaven, that which is beyond this world, breaks in. And um, the, in particular in the transfiguration, this happens in the trajectory of, that, of the gospel and the story of Jesus' life. Right after he's asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? And then Peter steps up, you're the Messiah, uh, the Holy One. And then um, right after that, there, though, of course, Jesus predicts what's going to happen. It's the, the foretelling of the arrest, the suffering, and crucifixion, and resurrection. Uh, but it's one of those, if we get into the uh, human part of Jesus for a moment and think about what he saw was before him. Uh, what was there was a journey toward just excruciating pain. Um, and so it was a thin part in his life. And so up on the mountain, of course, it was thin. But also in his public ministry is a thin part where he was very clear what he had to do and was choosing to move toward that. In our lives, there are certain places where we go that are thin places. And mountains quite often are that for people. Uh, but it's not the only place. Other places where just the, the magnificence of the creation uh, that God has done gets us in touch with the otherness and the holiness and the, the transcendence of God. But also there are thin places in our life. Um, some are super joyful, others are quite hard. The really, really low points that also become very thin because once we recognize the limits of what we can do, there is a thinness about the ability then to recognize what God is up to and to allow God to enter in and to transform things. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your majesty, your power, your almightiness, but also your love and intimacy and your desire for us to live and to have life. Help us claim those places in our life uh, as that are thin places, places where particularly you are able to enter in and transform, not just transfigure, which changes on the outside, but transform our lives so that we are in touch with uh, the essence of you, which is love, and are filled with your spirit and able to live toward love, toward hope, to live in faith. Amen.